Hi, it's Lenneke and this is my entry for Eva Sefriadu from Greece. She has an entry going on till the 15th of April and she wants us to make something small because she hasn't got much space in her craft room or where she lives to display everything. So this is what I made for her. It's a very small canvas. If you look at my hand, it's smaller. Oh, there's <laughs> still some gesso on there. I just finished this. It actually stands up. Now I um, I show you in this video, or at least I try to add that to this little bit, uh, how I make this. It's kind of like a tutorial. I don't talk, but uh, I kind of show you how I did this. So I had this canvas I put on some um, some lace and then I had these stickers this is so this is actually a sticker the tiny little girl is a sticker from Kim Anderson so you may know those kind of pictures they are so cute so I used that sticker and then I put lots of laces and flowers and embellishments all the way around it this is actually this keyhole I got from Debbie Vignola a while back and this kind of piece a clay piece I got from Colette from Country Creations and on the side I put all the way around this white and gold trim and there's of course some bling here and some buttons and a pro and my name on the back made with love by Lens Crafty Life and it's on this little stand which I uh, I painted it with gesso twice, so it has kind of like a shabby chic uh, look to it. And I did decide to put a flower on the top and some lace trim as well at the bottom because I thought it was a bit bare when I hadn't done so yet. So this kind of sits like that and this pretty lace piece kind of hangs over. And when it's flat it looks a bit like the flower is not in the right position but of course it's a stent and when you pull it out there you go the flower comes down so well I'll show you at the end of the video I won't move the camera now because it's a bit messy but I'll show you at the end of the video how it stands so feel free to watch that if you're interested and otherwise I thank you for watching right now and Ava I hope you like this and all the other beautiful entries you're getting for your uh, challenge and I'll post this very soon okay thanks for watching bye bye okay well I thought I had some nice music that I could put behind this part of the video but I couldn't find it anywhere anymore so sorry about that but I thought I may as well do a, a voice over then first time I'm doing this so I hope uh, it's gonna be okay and I'll give a little bit of explanation about what I'm doing. So this is actually gesso. I love to work with gesso because it's very, uh, um, how do you say, multifunctional. In this make, you'll see me use it in three different ways. And those are basically the three ways that I know you can use gesso. So you, if you have any other uses for it, then please let me know. But here I'm using it as a paint. Now it doesn't totally cover everything in one go because of course it isn't paint. It's kind of like a, almost like a white transparent paint. But at the end of the video, you will see me uh, do an extra coating of gesso over this. <coughs> Excuse me. And just, uh, I'm doing this just to give the stand a bit of a shabby chic look. So I'm just trying to get all in all the little, how do you say, nooks and crannies, all the little bits and pieces. And I am doing this quite roughly. I'm just trying to make sure there are no, uh, no drips anywhere. Now, if I wanted us to make us something small, so I thought this would be perfect for this challenge. And I do like altering things. It's just I have actually I have a lot of things, all sorts of different things that I want to alter. And I thought 
before I started doing, you know, partaking into challenges, I thought I could, you know, alter all those things and send them to everybody all over the world. But then the very, I think, ridiculous thing here in the Netherlands with postage is that somehow the rule is that it has to go through a very thin one and one quarter inch high Dutch mailbox. So even if I post it, say, to the US, and a lot of people in the US have like these kind of like 3D mailboxes here in the Netherlands, they don't care. It has to go through a Dutch letterbox. So I always have to send out thin packages, which is a shame because I've, I have so many nice things I want to alter and I'd love to share those with people. But as you may know, I have a challenge going on, a dress form challenge at the moment. And I will do a 3D alteration of something as a prize for that. Now back to what I'm doing here. I've used the gesso now in a second way as a glue. I put it all over the little canvas and it will hold this lace in place. Now I'm just, uh, this is a very soft pink lace. And it's just the, the perfect width. It just went right from top to bottom on this little canvas. So it was absolutely perfect for this. Now just the gesso doesn't dry straight away. So just to be sure that the lace stays in place while I'm decorating it, I am using actually some hot glue as well, just on the sides to keep it in place like here. Because I didn't want it to move or suddenly fall off while I'm busy decorating it. Because of course I'm not patient enough to now just sit and wait till the gesso has dried. And that the lace is totally properly stuck to the canvas. So I want to just move on. And that's why I like using the hot glue because it will keep things in its place straight away. Now, these are little stickers, actually, from Kim Anderson. You may know these pictures. They are not vintage, but I do have a little bit of an old-fashioned vintage kind of look to them. Now, since it's a sticker and I'm putting it on fabric, I am using some hot glue as well to just make sure that it would stick. So these pictures are actually kind of like new. They, these are today's children, but they're dressed up in usually in kind of like classic old fashioned clothes. And she kind of mutes the colors on her pictures, but then one color kind of pops out. And I do like that. Like in this picture, it's mainly the red of the rose that this little girl is holding and uh, some, some red in her hat that's standing out. Now here I'm using a very pretty piece of corner applique. I got that at a craft fair a while back. Actually on next week on the, the 6th of April there is that same craft fair again. So I hope to get some more, more pretty things there. Now this corner piece, it's not resin, it's actually made of clay. I got that from Colette from Country Creations. But it has got some uh, a green hue to it, so I will go over it again later with the gesso to tone it down. And that's basically my third way, the third way that I use gesso. So as a paint, as a glue, and to tone colors down in make. So I love working with gesso. If there's any other ways of using gesso, please let me know. Now this big piece of bling is actually too big, so I end up not using it. <coughs> In the meantime, I did put that very pretty clay piece, that lock on there, which I got from Debbie Vignola. I did a swap with her a while back. She didn't have any keys. I didn't have any locks. So I made some keys for her and she made some locks for me, which is great. Now, this is a very pretty flower. I think it's called a gardenia, I'm not sure. But it's kind of like a, a creamy color. And at the very bottom leaves, you can see there's just a little bit of red on the tips of those leaves. And it picks up on the color 
of the rose and the hat of the little girl. So that's why I really liked using this flower, particularly here. Now here I'm just taking out some bling. So it was nice to put some bling on. This particular bling I got from Wish. I've just kind of discovered Wish and I'm starting to get things from there. And they're not expensive. And they are they do have quite nice things on there, so that is great. Because basically most of my things I either get at that craft fair that is uh every six months. Or in charity shops, I get loads in charity shops. Used to work in a charity shop as well, and actually I'm working in a charity shop again. Ha ha! Paid this time, yay! <laughs> and I'm getting great discounts there. In the previous one where I worked as a volunteer, I never got a discount, but this one I get, and I, I get paid, and I get discounts on top of that whenever I buy anything, so that's great as well. Now this trim is very pretty, it's kind of like a Chinese braid and it's in white and gold, got that at, at Wish as well. I got it in several colors, I got it also in solid gold, but I thought for this make that would be a little bit much. And I'm just finishing off the sides of the little canvas. Always like to finish off the sides as well because you can see the sides of a canvas. So. I always like finishing that off as well. And these are these trims are perfect for that. It's very pretty. I love Chinese braid. Need to get some more of that. Well, not of this particular one. I think this is the first time I use this particular one. But just different kinds of Chinese braid. Now, what I actually should have done here, and this is, this is maybe a, a tip for anybody else working with Chinese braids or other trims that can fray very easily. I put a little bit of hot glue here on the end to keep it from fraying. But what I actually should have done is before you, the, the best is basically to measure um, the, the, the braid how much you want to use exactly and then on the back where you want to cut it <coughs> excuse me before you cut it put a dot of hot glue on it flatten it like either you know with a, a rubber glove if you if you've got that on or a silicone glove on your finger or press it in a um uh, a silicone mat or on a glass like here i basically have like a, a glass craft board behind it Press it in there, let it dry so that the glue flattens, then cut it right where you glued it and the ends won't fray. Now, I didn't figure that out myself. I got that from a, uh, another lady, I have no idea whom, here on YouTube, but uh, it works really, really well. Now, what I just did is you saw me go over um, that corner piece um, with clay and with the gesso just to tone down that green hue that was on there and now I'm just uh, embellishing it these are some very pretty silk flowers or ribbon flowers and these are kind of like in the uh, we call it salmon pink here in the Netherlands but I think you call it like a, a peachy pink and I know Ava, she loves that color. She uses it a lot. I've got several makes and cards from her where she uses this color. And I think it's a very pretty color. Now, this rose was the perfect size for on that spot, I think, on that lace. Now, I'm not putting anything on that lace corner anymore because it's a beautiful piece of applique. I really love that. So I don't want to cover it up with flowers but I do want to put some more flowers on the left part, just around the lock. So this is kind of like a mixed media little canvas. I do like mixed media as well. Now I'm just figuring out where to put all the flowers and I've got some buttons here as well. I ran into this little bag with buttons in my stash and 
I hardly ever use buttons. I do have a lot of them and I've got them all you know, sorted out and color by color and very organized, which is great, but then I forget to use them. So now I had this mixed little bag with mixed buttons in there, which I actually have to sort out and color. And I saw these, like the, the whites and the creamy and these pink ones in there, and I thought they would go well on this make so I do want to use more buttons in my makes because I do think they are nice I think this is only the second time ever that I've used buttons in anything I made so just figuring out where that rose needs to go just putting it on the left there in the corner And then just putting some other flowers on there. With my trusty glue gun, hot glue. Now th this particular hot glue gun, I'm not sure which brand it is actually, but it doesn't make the glue too hot. So, which is great because I had another one and it made the glue so hot that if you even dared touching the glue with your bare finger, you would really get a blister. It was so hot. And I sometimes see other other ladies run into that problem. Now, there is a difference. I've In the meantime, I've got three different kind of hot glue guns. So, but that first one, and I actually don't even use anymore. It just gets the glue way too hot and it burns my fingers. So this particular one is very good. It gets the glue hot enough to run and to stick things, but if I touch it, it's still hot, but not so hot that it will give me a, a blister, which is great. And so just putting on, <clears throat> trying to see if I can put on some more flowers. And where to put them. So these are little roses. These are actually the, the mulberry roses. I love those. They're very sturdy, so they keep their shape so beautifully. And I got these actually off the Dutch uh, Dutch Marktplatz, which is kind of like an eBay. That's another pretty button I put on there. And this lady was just selling off her stash because she had too much. So I got loads of her actually. Now here again, I use the gesso to just tone the different colors down so that they get a more muted color and they are a bit more soft, not as harsh, not as standing out. And I put it basically on everything, on the flowers, but also on the buttons. So you can use the gesso basically on anything and everything and just kind of brush over it to just make the colors blend in a bit more. <coughs> so I think that's pretty much it for the canvas. Now I just have to... Uh, oh yeah. Sorry for my arm there, I'm just trying to get this piece of fabric. Now these are, I printed these off myself on basically these are my little labels that say made with love by Lens Crafty Life. I printed those off myself on, it basically in reverse on a transfer paper and then I iron it onto a cotton and I just cut it out as and when I need it. Now I don't have the fabric to that you can print on straight away that you can put through your printer. I'm trying to get that. It's very hard to come by in the Netherlands. I did find some recently, so I'm trying to get some of that, but in the meantime I just use this method. And it works well, but the transfer, when you transfer it, I do notice it leaves kind of like a, a plasticky a cover almost over your image so it's much nicer to be able to print on fabric straight away so 
I do want to get that. I try to put some uh, or to tack some fabric onto paper and then put it through my printer because I've seen other people do that. But my printer got jammed, so that didn't work, unfortunately. Now here I'm putting my second coat of gesso on the frame. And it still doesn't cover it totally. Again, it's not paint, of course, but I don't mind that it doesn't cover the frame fully because it gives it a bit of a, a shabby chic look. So personally, I, I quite like that. One coat was too little, but two coats I think is perfect. At least on this soft, on this light wood. So yeah, if you know any more uses for gesso, so use it as a paint, use it as a glue, use it to tone colors down. If you have any other uses for gesso, please let me know. I'd love to know that. Just put it down below this video in the comments, then uh, that would be great. Thank you in advance. <laughs> now I did leave this uh, stand to dry the first coating and you know how long was this about 15 minutes this is all filmed in real time i haven't cut in this video so this is all real time and it was pretty dry already so gesso does dry quite quickly but of course now since i have finished my little canvas i am too impatient for this coat to dry so you will see me use my um, uh, hot air gun heat gun that's what you call it so to just dry it quickly so i'm just going over it and trying to get into all the nooks and crannies do not forget anything I think I'm almost done here. To, trying to paint all sides of this in one go, which normally probably wouldn't do, but since it's so small and it's drying very quickly, I was able to do all the sides in one go. Just getting some glue off there. Now here you can see that I've, I've cleaned it all up, all the gesso is gone. That's the good thing of working on like a glass mat. You can put like gesso and to paint straight onto your mat. So you work on it and then I just wiped it off with a baby wipe actually. Probably better would be just a cloth that you can rinse out. It's probably better for the environment <laughs> to not use too many baby wipes. But anyway, I have baby wipes on hand, so I use baby wipes this time. And here you see me using the heat gun. And it does dry quite quickly, like here. I, I have it on, I have a, a, a stand 1 and a stand 2 on, or speed 1 and speed 2 on this heat gun. And I use speed 2 here to dry it off quickly. And it goes pretty fast because I only, as you see, as you just saw, I already put it face down and it was absolutely fine. So now the only thing I am adding here, because there was a little gap in between those flowers and I didn't like it. So I'm just putting in a pretty flat back pearl there just to fill up that gap and finish it off. And then I put it on the stand and I thought I would have it finished by now but in the end I did think the stand was a little bit bare so I decided to add two more things to the stand itself which you'll see in the next little part so this is it this is the finished product I put on the top an extra rose and there you can see it 
pretty image all the flowers and here you can also see that on the bottom part of the easel I put kind of like this little loopy dangle trim and uh, thanks for watching hope you all liked it and hope Ava will like it as well see you next time bye bye